Hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today we're going to do a video on, on using a dart scheme with a lead blocker to attack the tight front. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, Game Strat Sideline Replay System that we use, Dome Hats is the headwear company that I use for play fast football and the school that I'm currently at. Baker Sporting Goods is a local uh, sporting goods store here in Northeast Florida that provides us with our uniforms, coaches gear, fans gear. Uh, Every you know, bit of apparel we have is from Baker Sports. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. We have one in our weight room. High and tight, which is a ball security training aid with an auditory uh, device so that if you do not hold the ball properly, you won't hear the beep. So it gives you that muscle memory that you need to understand how to hold the ball properly. Just Play Football is the digital uh, software that I use when I'm going to uh, talk at, at a if I have to do a webinar, if I have to speak at a clinic, or if I'm going to do anything playbook-wise, I use uh, Just Play Football as my uh, play drawing tool in their digital software product. All right, so um, last two days we did uh, did a video on breaking the stack. We did a video on, on um, the tight slash mint front a little bit. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk a little bit about attacking that and a concept that you can use um, to attack the tight front. So. Uh, we, when we when we were talking about the tight or the mid front yesterday or, or you know the broken stack the other day, one of the things we were talking about is how teams are trying to take those B gaps away from spread teams. So those four eyes are getting in a position now where they're taking those B gaps away and they're causing some issues at you know at the places that a lot of spread teams and a lot of good football teams, whether it be zone teams or gap teams, where they want to live and and you know the burden of that open B gap with RPOs and who's going to fit it, how you going to fit it. So. The, the, you know, the tight front is taking those B-gaps away. So what it's doing now is it's causing some issues in the regular, let's say, you know, zone read game. All right, when it's causing issues on the backside because you don't know what to do with that four eye. All right, if you just try and wash that four eye down on the backside of the zone play, now you've got to figure out what to do or how to read a second level defender on the zone play. Some teams have looked at taking a page out of, out of uh, you know, veer teams or option teams Flex bone teams and saying, all right, now we're going to arc release and and you know we're going to we're going to get to it that way. And what they're finding out is is that you know they think they're going to get scrape exchange, so they think you know you're thinking now when you go to run the zone play, if you can arc all right, if you can if you can arc the four eye and you're going to get gap exchange, you're thinking that you're going to get a chase and a replace and now the arc of the tackle is going to block the replacing mic. But what you find out from a lot of defensive teams that do that is, is they read the blocking scheme. So now on a base block, all right, towards that end, the mic might fit an open B gap instead of scrape exchanging. The mic might only scrape exchange, all right, interior inside blocks that are working, all right, down in towards the ball. So if they get some good 3-4 teams or tight front teams you'll see when they get this arc release, they'll go ahead and treat that like a base block theory so that he can attack through that, which now makes the mic plug and open beacon. So they found out that trying to run it like old school, uh, like old school veer teams by arc releasing and thinking you're going to get scrape exchange and draw it up and saying, all right, if we get scrape exchange on this, this is perfect. We arc, we get to the mic, they squeeze our quarterbacks out with a lead blocker. You know, we can option the overhang, we can do whatever we want to the overhang, we've got the box blocked the way we want to, right? So, we found out that, that this, you know, the zone play was having a, a little bit, some issues against the tight front. But one of the things people started figuring out versus the tight front with those soft edges is maybe we should start using a tackle to pull a little bit more and go back to all right, instead of those G-fold schemes or, because one of the things you're always trying to do, especially when you're running any plays that involve a pull, or usually you're trying to get an extra guy to the play side that the defense can account for. And the tight front is so balanced with the two four eyes, the two inside backers that can fall back on zone plays. All right, so like the one back issue that you're running into on a zone play is, you know, you're, again, you're working the zone play this way, and then usually what those stack teams are doing is the, the nose is falling behind and lagging behind the center. So what's happening from a fit perspective is now they're getting this fit in the C gap. He's got that in the B gap. That front side backer is going to go ahead and fit the front side A gap because you're going to lag the nose to the back side A gap. And then this backside, if they're 
traditional zone blocking it and they're not arcing the four eye, all right, on this backside with this B gap fit and this A gap fit, the mic can play slow and then fall back to play the quarterback in a traditional, all right, zone read theory. And then we just talked about, you know, if you tried to arc it, what that would do. So what teams are finding out now is, or at least what we've tried to do at times, because of the leverage of the four eyes, it, it can kind of make, and this is one of the reasons we actually like it. Last year when I had, uh, last year I had a defensive lineman that's playing Division One football now at Liberty as a freshman, and anytime we were facing gap scheme teams, we would always try and play him in a four eye, and we'd try and get him away from where we thought the gap. So if it was a, if it was a team that was more power related, we try and get him away from the sniffer or the fullback or wherever it was if that was a tendency because we wanted him on the backside because you couldn't come off with a tackle when he was a four eye. So if you used any G schemes at all, you had to block him back with the center, which meant we got one on one everywhere and we were dictating the matchups that we wanted to create. So just because of the simple leverage of the four eye, it's a lot easier to block the four eye out with a guard and pull a tackle because. When doing that, you can now still get at least one double team. If you use a G scheme and you've got to block the center back, you're going to get all solo blocks up front. So if you want a double team, using a tackle pull where you can block back on a four eye here, now we can get a double on nose to a mic. All right? Because, again, because of the leverage of the four eye, it's got soft edges. The defense actually wants the ball running out wide so they can support it, whether they're uh, a normal tight front team or a three high safety uh, uh, tight front team like Iowa State, they want second and third level players running with speed to the ball. That's why they play the defense. It's a little bit, um, you know, it's kind of like, you, you know, the teams that hard spill and you want to take away vertical seams in the running game. How do you do that? Well, you put two guys in the B gap in that tight front and now you make the ball naturally go wide and you're, and you're trying to run to the ball. So they want the ball there. So. When you get that front, sometimes, you know, um, it, it's easier sometimes instead of fighting to try and get all the things done that the defense doesn't want done, sometimes it's easier to play into their hands and just find a way to get numbers where you need numbers and use the angles that they're giving you. So here, to me, it's easier to block the four-eye down, get a puller up around, all right, you won't get inside in an ISO theory with the four eye like the old dark play, but you know you're going to get the ball, all right, to the perimeter because of that soft edge. Well, now when you go dark lead at a two back, now you can get a guy up there blocking the force play. So you can now block the force player here, right, and now you can get that tackle around to block the will. The only guy you really can't get to is that high weak safety or sometimes possibly versus the three safety defense. All right, it might be that star or that, you know, that middle safety that Iowa State plays. That might be the guy that you can't get to if this one comes down and you can get to him. All right, so a third level player is always going to be one of the toughest guys to get to in any scheme. All right, it's going to be one of the toughest guys to work against in almost any scheme. So the dot lead play at least gives you a chance now. It, it's similar in theory to running a counter play. But instead of getting a kick and a wrap, you're now getting somebody on the force player and a wrap on the inside backer, and you're choosing to base block the front side or down block the front side as opposed to kicking somebody. So you really don't you don't get a kick. What you get, all right, and, and we started seeing this, honestly, we started seeing this against our odd stack front. We started seeing teams, because of the nature of, of spill stuff, we started seeing teams that were running counter plays and they were base blocking our five technique and they were putting both pullers, all right, the guard and the sniffer, they were putting both pullers inside on, on the two backers. So, like for us, in, in um, what we started seeing versus our stack, what we started seeing was teams that would base block the front, So we started seeing counter plays where they were base blocking that, down blocking that back, all right, and then they were base blocking that and they were using guard sniffer as two inside wrappers because they wanted to avoid 
the, the play getting spilled. All right. So it, it, it's always trying to find ways to work around, either use what the defense is giving you, all right, or work around what the defense is giving you. Now, another way to do this is to run quarterback dart lead. So, and again, I'll draw it up. I'll draw it up this time the Iowa State way. So, if you were two by two, and you were playing against a broken stack team, they may give you, all right, one backer in the box because they need to apex the other. They need to break the stack and apex these other backers, however you want to look at them, so that the middle safety can stay there, so that the high safeties can play their, their trap or their buzz or whatever the coverage is, they've got a, ver a bunch of different variations. Well, another effective way here is, is putting a quarterback dart and running a, a, a dart lead play with the QB, all right? Because you can equate and try and get all the numbers that you want to get, you just lose a little bit of an angle on the mic. But what you can do now is you can get back here. You can double this to the mic. You can still get the four eye block down. All right. Now, by running it this way, you're getting the numbers of the slot, the tail, and the pull. So now they want the ball to get worked out here because their, their wild card is going to be that guy running like hell. Okay. Well, now, by pulling the tackle and using the tailback in a one-back set, Anytime you can use the tailback as a blocker and use the quarterback as a runner, that's how you equate the numbers. So now on that front side, you may be able to get up to the safety. You may be able to possibly lead block the force player. And now when you get the tackle wrap, you might be able to get the tackle up on the middle safety. And then you just simply go some type of bubble hook or, or something where the quarterback just takes a step here, sells bubble, and now you're running quarterback lead. You're blocking back on the four, so you, you feel okay there. You're getting a double up front. You, you're pretty sure you're going to get the edge because you're going to block the front side four eye down. All right? So when you know what you're playing against, and you know that's the front, and you know that that's how they want to play it in, in let's say, a two-by-two two world, or in a two-back world, you knew how that's, that's how they wanted to play it. If they're going to use that middle safety, all right, the same way we try to use them sometimes, if they're going to use him as a run fitter, eventually you've got to come up with things and ways to create numbers to get that guy blocked. And the dark lead play is a great way to create that number, especially with a quarterback lead, because now you're going to get the tackle and the back. So when you hand the ball off to the back, you lose that, and that guy becomes extra almost all the time. As soon as you use the back and you use the quarterback as a ball carrier, you get extra numbers to equate. So when you're facing that tight front and you know it's going to pull, it's going to create some issues on your pull schemes, you know it's going to create some issues if you run your G schemes and, and you've got to block back with the center. All right. Another thing to try, and, and I'll, I might do a video on this later, uh, running a, a G scheme or a power scheme and leaving the four eye backside unblocked and arc releasing the tackle up to the mic and now giving them a read where if they want to widen, all right, if they want to widen with the, with the tackle's arc and plug the mic, now you're running power and you're bringing a puller to the front side. So if they try to plug the mic, they lose a backside player from being able to get to the front side. So that's another way of looking at uh, working against a tight front is maybe running power front side, but instead of power reading the front side, power read the back side for I like a midline theory. All right, so um, that, that's ways to attack the tight front, ways to figure out how to get blockers where you need them. Um, you know, uh, if you watch Coastal Carolina right now, they do a, a bunch of neat things where they midline the four I and then they use uh, a sniffer as an insert guy on the backer so they get the best of both worlds. If the four I widens and the backer inserts, they put a sniffer up on them. So guys are finding creative ways to attack the tight front. You've got to be able to understand that if it's prevalent and it's around and it's catching fire, it's going to be what everybody starts to do. you got to find ways to beat it. So obviously using leverage by blocking back on a four eye, pulling a tackle, trying to get extra numbers to the front side, all right, is a great way to go about trying to attack that front. So again, guys, uh, thank you for following Play Fest Football, following the channel. Make sure you turn, uh, click on the subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you turn notifications on so you know every time we do a video. Remember to go thumbs up, thumbs down in the video either way. Uh, your, your, your response, whether you like it or dislike it, your response lets us know the content that you like, the, the things that you want to see in videos, so please thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave a comment, every comment that gets through to me, I try to respond to, so 
Uh, I like being interactive with the audience as much as I can. Every comment you leave that I see, I will respond back to. All right, so uh, if you're still playing, good luck to you. If you're deep in the playoffs, good luck to you. If you're getting ready to start playing soon in other states, good luck to you. Stay safe. Uh, make sure you do everything that, that um, they're telling us to do um, to, to stay safe, wear your mask, uh, wash your hands, social distance, all the things you need to do. We made it to a football season uh, and played an entire season, so it's possible. You can do it. Make sure you're following all the rules. Stay safe. Thanks for following Play Fast. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll catch you guys next time.